Hey guys, welcome back to The Loft, my weekly YouTube show. Tonight I have my very good friend, Kevin Berry. And uh, Kevin is a comedian, he's also a podcaster. And uh, welcome to the show, Kevin. Great to be here, Jim, good to see you. Good to see you too. I mean, we know each other, Kevin, from the New York comedy scene. We've done a bunch of shows together. We've done a bunch of Janice Massetti shows together. Um, before yep. we jump into all of that, could you just tell me where you were born and raised? Yeah, I was born uh, just basically in Chicago, the Chicago okay. area, uh, mm -hmm. and I was raised in the dirty Midwest, Chicago and uh, in, in Ohio, Southwest Ohio. Okay, uh, what kind of kid were you, Kevin? Were you a creative kid? Yeah, I was pretty creative. Um, I lied a lot. Uh -huh. and, um, <laughs> Um, no, I, yeah, I, I, I was definitely a kid who marches to the beat of a different drummer. Okay. Um, could you just tell me real quick, uh, some of your comedy influences growing up? Yeah, my comedy influences were mostly my friends, people I hung around. Um, and I, they're, they're particular folks. There was a, I don't in grade school, there was this guy, this guy named Chris Posevitz. Um, uh -huh. I doubt he'll see this. Every every once in a while, you encounter somebody as you're growing up that like they're just able to do or say something in a way that you realize is much funnier than other people. You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes I was that person, but I would be in the I would be in the car, I'd be like in gym class with this guy, mm -hmm. and he would do this deadpan stuff yeah. that like he could just say something almost, almost expressionless and just move on to the next topic. And it would just, it would destroy me. Okay. So he was definitely, um, he later um, became, I, I guess, I, I think that the term is schizophrenic, which is, mm -hmm. is sad. Mm -hmm. um, but um, before that happened, uh, he was one of the funniest people I'd ever met. Um, and then Richard Pryor, Robin okay. Williams, yeah, Dave yeah. Chappelle, yeah. Um, Bill Burr, Louis C.K. Okay, wow. Uh, and there's a bu there's a bunch of them. Um, yeah. So yeah, just throw them at uh, I'm throwing them at you. <laughs> so so Kevin, what got you what got you started in stand up comedy? What got you your start? I so I got into it basically um, kind of by accident. Uh, okay. There was two things. Like for the first off, I was writing. I think I was getting into Louis C.K. and mm -hmm. um, I was listening to older stand-up. I was listening to like Woody Allen stand-up from the '60s and yeah. uh, Seinfeld stand-up and stuff mm -hmm. in the um, in the period that I was starting out. And I started thinking I'd been I'd written a play and okay. I, I I'd gotten some input from a, um, a a mentor of sorts who said if you're gonna mm -hmm. you know work on dramatic writing, screenwriting, playwriting. Mm -hmm. take an acting class that's gonna okay. help you okay um and so it was this combination of on the one hand thinking like I'm, i wrote a play i'm trying to write different i've been trying to make movies i've been working in kind of the film video area realm as a video editor and producer and stuff uh-huh and yeah. um i was trying to branch out and have more freedom like not be tied to the b production budgets and all this stuff has to happen before you actually make a movie yeah yeah um you know so then i got to theater i was like no no i want less things that i have to pay for okay. so the next step was like theater okay that's simpler smaller budgets you know you can get yeah. a few people together yeah. and create something um and then the next step from that was like well improv you got nothing uh you got no um <laughs> you know no no props no budgets you're doing yeah. a, a fake object work and then the utter minimalist setup is just stand up. It's just a dude with a mic or a gal with a microphone on a stage, yeah. so, you know? So that, that kind of was the, I ended up, ta you know, in a, taking a stand up comedy class because the okay. improv one was booked Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, rest is history. Okay, Kevin. Now I, I have seen your act and you are a very funny guy. Um, could you take me a little bit through your process of writing a joke? you know, from an idea to where it lands on stage? Yeah, so I'll try. I, it's like, you know, I don't know. I'm curious about your writing process because I've also seen your act and I know you have an acting background. Yeah. Like, 
I, just out of curiosity, I, I will. I promise I'll dive in. But okay. what, how do you start with a joke? Like, um, what's what's the spark for you? Bas basically, my it starts out as a little kernel, a little kernel of an idea, and okay. um, usually I'm writing in a very dim lit, um, very secluded, dim lit place, alone, okay. always alone. Uh, you know, writing, starting out with that little kernel, and just exploring on what ideas I could take from that. Um, right. It could be any. It could be anything. You know, it could be somebody saying something in a diner, or it could be my brother telling me something. You know, important or something. It could be any of those things. But usually, I'm alone and I'm very focused and concentrated on just trying to explore that little kernel of an idea. I mean, I feel like you really encapsulated at the start <laughs> of a lot of jokes. It's it's yeah. it's a it is a kernel. You know, yeah. it's something that's like you're stuck on it, and it's. Yeah. It's like um, I don't I don't know quite how better to describe it than you have an, an intuition or an instinct yeah. or a sense that there's something funny about this and I want to yeah. unpack it um, and um, you can't it's not clear like how do you unpack a kernel like if it's a popcorn kernel you got to cover it in oil heat it up get it to explode yeah there's no simple process like that for coming up with a joke like yeah my process is. Um, I will write stuff down, you know, okay. I'll write yeah. down an idea um, or I'll, I'll, I'll be doing something like showering, you know, shower thoughts is, is a classic thing that people, there's yeah. like a whole subreddit of people who like come up with, oh, this is this witty yeah. or clever or funny thing I came up, I thought of in the shower. I think yeah. for whatever reason, when we're doing some certain other activities, the mind is suddenly kind of freed up to yeah. start like speculating and spinning off on its own. Yeah, definitely. And um, so that that's for me is where a lot of, you know, those things, it'll come when I'm doing the dishes, you mm -hmm. know, I'll, I'll think about something, I'll be like, you know what? That's crazy that that's that, that exists in our world. It's, it's something will pop out to me that is, you know, mm -hmm. just, it's like, that's just strange or that's funny or that's, that something's wrong about that. Hmm. Um, and I'll start yeah. talking to myself. Yeah. Kind of like I am right now. Well, well, Kevin, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your podcast. You have a cyberpunk podcast, <laughs> sure. um, Hellgate City Companion. Could you tell yeah. us a little bit about what that is, what it's about, um, how you form that? Yeah, the Hellgate City Companion is a, a satirical podcast. It's presented as like a community radio show for this fictional town called Neo Amsterdam. Okay. Which is really, it, it's really just like a, a dystopian cyberpunk version of New York City. Okay. Uh, in an you know, alternate dimension. Yeah. And I came up with it after struggling to create a podcast, like a topical news show type of podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I was just, I was hitting a wall there. And okay. so I wanted to do something that was more fictional um, so that I, I don't know, have more freedom, more, more flexibility in the world. I wasn't just reacting to news stories. Okay. Um, but I found that by creating this world of uh, this sort of dystopian cyberpunk uh, sci-fi version of New York, mm -hmm. I could still talk about stuff that's happening in a way, you know, by by um, by sort of mapping it on top of this world and having a cyber coup uh, mm -hmm. in the capital and all kinds of things that for me let me talk about it, but also sort of twist it and find look at it in a different light. Okay. Um, so that's that's kind of where it came from, and I've always been a a, a sci-fi nerd, a Blade Runner freak, and um love the, the that whole genre of, okay. of uh, Neuromancer and the William Gibson novels and all that stuff I you know, read when I was younger um, so that's kind of the that's that's kind of where it comes from there's okay. other, another thing which is like so there's other podcasts out there like this that are kind of like uh, this the, the idea of the show is it's a radio show in mm. another city you know in like a fictional city yeah there's a famous one called welcome to night vale is maybe one of the most popular long running okay. uh, so people have said that mine is like a night vale meets cyberpunk okay you know, like a urban night vale meets cy people have pitched it back to me as that i'm like okay that's fair i, I have yeah. listened to that it's great um 
it has humor in it. And um, there was a thing in the beginning. <laughs> so when I, growing up, I, my family listened to a lot of uh, NPR. Okay. Um, right. Do you, you ever listen to uh, public radio? I have. I have. You sound like it, it traumatized you. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> for, for whatever reason, like, it was a cultural aspect of my, freak, of my yeah. family that we just, we always had a radio on. I think my dad thought that it would keep uh, burglars from breaking in. Okay. Um, that was like our cheap um, yeah. alarm of whatever burglar repellent. But yeah. um, as a result, I've listened to probably more hours of, of public radio, uh, especially when I was in Ohio, than anything else on earth. And, okay. Um, so there, there was there used to be a show that was like the NPR version of Saturday Night Live. It was called uh, Pra a Prairie Home Companion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if you ever heard, you ever hear that. No, I haven't. I haven't heard of that. Um, you haven't lived, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have. It's not that great, but it's like <laughs> <laughs> it, it's basically like uh, you know, like old timey radio um, shows where they have like the foley sound effects of the footsteps and like yeah, a, you know, yeah. a detective story or something. Yeah. So they would do that. They they would do a variety show that would comment on some events of the day, have some spoof commercials. It was all live radio broad, but like done on a, on a theater stage, Broadway style in Minnesota. Okay. And they had like v actors that could do voices and Foley. And yeah. so like that was, that kind of was a spark for what, you know, why I called it Hellgate city companion. Cause I was like, okay. I'm gonna mix in some of those elements that you don't see on uh, these other shows, like Welcome to, Welcome to Night Vale, which is literally just one guy, mm -hmm. ninety ninety percent of the time, just talking to you, like doing, telling you about community news. So okay. it's a, it's mixing in some of this like radio drama. There's two characters. There's a dialogue. There's sound effects. Yeah. There's stuff that um that that to me would be kind of like oh I have like a mini play inside the show. Okay. So anyway, that's that's me going off on a tangent, but hellgatecity.com. Guys, check, check it out. out. Check it out. Uh, I'm very it's interested fun. in checking it out myself. On a different note, uh, Kevin, could you tell me some of your favorite comedy clubs you have played at? Um, I could, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, I've really enjoyed playing at uh, Gotham Comedy Club. Yeah. Uh, Broadway Comedy Club. It's mm -hmm. been good. Yeah. Uh, I loved uh, the Creek in the Cave was a uh, special place in my heart. Okay. No longer, uh, no longer in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, Grizzly Pear, the the, <laughs> the Village Lantern. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm sure I'm missing some major one there. Uh, I love. I mean, New York has great clubs. It's the Cellar, Stand Up New York. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's it's a uh, fantastic. The Stand. It's one yeah. that I've enjoyed. Um, so you know. Okay. Love those clubs. Yeah, me too. Um, where could we find you on social media? Where could we find your stuff on social media? So if you go to kevinplease.com. Okay. It'll take you to my uh, uh, series of the links to all my stuff. Um, okay. You'll see links to Hellgate City. Uh, you'll see a link to the Dope Comedy Zoom, which is a live Zoom show that we do. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a uh, the, the the virtual version of, of my w uh, weekly show that I've been doing up in mm -hmm. uh, Inwood, Washington Heights for the past five years, and um, yeah, and everything else, my YouTube, all that stuff. KevinPlease.com. Okay, awesome. On on a little bit more of a serious note, Kevin, uh, where do you see the future of comedy headed? I think. Um, towards laughter. Okay. I mean, we just got some good news that the New York City Comedy Clubs are opening up April 2nd. So, uh, I mean, are you excited about that? I'm, I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous about it. You know, yeah. like, I don't know if we're out of the clear, or in, I'm sorry, in the clear yet in terms yeah. of the, the, the way the virus is evolving. Like, Okay. The variants and all that stuff. It's it's a little it's it, it's a little concerning, but mm -hmm. I do think that it's good to have a, a goal, um, an intention, and at some point the people who've been vaccinated, people who've had the disease, people who feel safe, there you have to start somewhere, you know. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about, like 30% capacity or something, or do, do you know what that what uh, is? I think they said 33% capacity okay. to start off with, yeah. So, so I mean, you know, 
I yeah. think it's like, look, that's comedy is it, it has it has trans. Um, I guess uh, not transcended, but it's it's sort of transitioned into this online version. Yeah. I mean, there's there's always has been YouTube and your Snapchats and your your Twitters and stuff, but like, I think that that we've opened up a lot of doors for the potential to continue doing virtual comedy in the future, which is which is exciting. Yeah. And um, you know, I I know that the brick and mortar comedy will come if it doesn't. So April second, great. If something's off a cocktail at that point and it and, and it gets pushed to May or some people you know people are cautious to come out like uh -huh. it's yeah. gonna happen um, yeah. I just I hope that it does happen in a way that doesn't uh, get a, a bunch of people sick that, that that's the only thing I'm you know hopefully all right we go um, that way uh, on a little bit of a different note Kevin if you were to give a young person uh, starting out as a comic or in the entertainment industry what advice would you give a young person today, right now, starting out? I mean, definitely turn back. Okay. You know, um, it's dangerous. It's a uh, it's cutthroat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're gonna get your feelings hurt. Yeah. Uh, most likely. No, I mean, <laughs> if you really want this, there's the whole world is out there. You can you can Google it. You can find talk to your. You mm -hmm. can tweet at your heroes. Like, I'd say ask the people of try and seek out the funniest people that you look up to that, that will respond to you. Um, mm -hmm. As long as, you know, I mean, don't get mixed up into, into a, a Me Too situation, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, because yeah, that's, that's, there have been some tricky, uh, some tricky, you know, whatever, yeah. kids reaching out to, uh, to adults. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's there for you if you really want want to do it, and okay. and um, we need we need new energy, we need new blood, so get ready to write jokes. Yeah, or awesome. ju or just start, <laughs> just good start. That's what I say. Just start. Good advice. Good advice. I have kind of a fun question for you, Kevin. Um, okay. If if you were able to sit down with anybody from the entertainment industry and just have a talk with, who would you sit down and and, and have a conversation with? Who would you sit down and talk to? Anybody in the entertainment Anybody, industry. yes. Jeez, man. I mean, I would say William Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. uh, he's long dead, so yeah. it would be a one-sided conversation. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, part of me is like, yeah, I, I will be very curious, curious to know how, how the quote-unquote industry, as far as I know, the dude was, I think it was financed by... Uh, well, who knows? I like to get to the bottom of that mystery. Yeah. Um, and uh, of living people. Gosh, man. It's weird, James, because like this is I would have to pre it have to presuppose that whoever it is that I that I talk to mm -hmm. is like open to talking to me. Okay. <laughs> you know, because I, I like I might want to I might want to pick Dave Chappelle's brains. Yeah. But like. If the dude is over me in like thirty seconds, then I don't want to put him through that. Like I, no. I don't want to be the guy that like bored the well, shit. Well, just pretend, just the, the pretend that they're open to it, Kevin. Op they're open oh, to yeah. talking to you. So, so Dave yeah, Chappelle I mean, is up up on the list of people. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll, also, I, I guess I need I also put Bill Burr. Okay. Uh, on there, um, yeah. just to, another guy, uh, pale dude without much hair. Um, mm -hmm. But partly for B Bill Burr, because um, mm -hmm. I saw him, I've, I've w been watching him in The Mandalorian um, and watching his acting for the, I mean, I've seen a little bits and pieces of him acting and stuff before that, but it's kind of, I would really like to pick his brains about that experience as well. It's cool to see him yeah. branching out. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, thank you, Kevin, for stopping by the loft. Uh, let me pick hey, your man. brain. Um, guys, plan. you can check out Kevin on Facebook. You could also check out his podcast, um, Hellgate right. City Companion. And it. again, guys, remember to click like and hit subscribe. You could also follow me on Instagram. And again, thanks, Kevin, for being here, being yeah, a good sport fun. and being on the show. Thanks again, man. Indeed. Thanks for having me. No uh, problem, Kevin. Safe. Okay, guys, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.